Again, I'm Costas Torregas. I'm the Associate Director of CSPRIC. And uh, very happy to uh, be following the, uh, the first two excellent presentations, which I think kind of have, have given us a, a, a stunning uh, spectrum. On the one hand, the technical aspects. On the other hand, the administrative aspects. Both of which are right. How can we deny either one? What I wanted to do is to kind of go somewhere in between and, and become the, the, the process man. And, but to begin that, I'd like to answer the question. It says here, uh, is America ready to vote on the Internet? So the question I would ask you is, are you aware of the name Joshua Ledet? Nobody knows Joshua yeah, Ledet. Okay, Joshua Ledet was the winner last week of the voting, and he's now one of three that America continues to vote for. This week, it will go down to two, I think, and next week down to one. Uh, about 70 million people cast their votes in 24 hours. 70 million people. It's expected that by the time it gets to a, to a runoff between two people, it will probably be 120 million Americans that will vote. Now, some of these, if, you, if you're an expert in, in the American Idol, which I am not, you can vote more than once. So it doesn't mean that 70 million Americans voted. It does mean that 70 million votes were cast. And just as a systems engineer, I say, OK. So the answer to the question, is America ready to vote on the internet, has been answered at least in one vertical. The answer is yes. Absolutely. Now, lest you, you misunderstand me, I'm a, a lover of public administration. I teach public administration. I have the utmost respect and, and fear about our ability to run democracy. And I'm not demeaning and saying voting for, an, for a president is the same as voting for American Idol. However, I also draw your attention to the fact that nobody screamed and yelled. It was fraud. It was a setup. They might have said people were too stupid to, to like the other girl that didn't get voted. But nobody has ever challenged the process. And by the way, just in, I had no idea how the votes are done. So I actually went on the web. And there are three ways. You can do toll-free voting with an 800 number. You can do an AT&T text voting. And you can do an online voting using your Facebook persona. So multiple platforms, verified because it comes back and says, thank you, you voted. And 70 million of them did it in 24 hours. So I, just as a, as a humanist, I'm saying, OK, so check mark there. Yes, America is ready and can vote and can agree to the results of the vote. Can agree to the results of the vote. Nobody has ever said somebody fixed the, this election. That's more, that's more than can be said about our election, the public policy election cycle we have. I also wanted to sneak in something that came up in another C-Spring event that we had here uh, a couple of months ago. And that's a sneaking change from cybersecurity, where the, the challenge is to secure something. Absolutely. 100% secure. And I know some of my friends will absolutely you know, fall on their sword to make sure it's 100% and not 99 point, and then take 17 nines out there. Versus the broader question of risk management. Where do you put your money? Is it in technology? Is it in process? Is it in policy? Is it in training? And then take your lumps accordingly. Risk management is a concept that's different from cybersecurity. It accepts the fact that we're not going to go to zero in any one aspect of security, but we're going to manage the risk to an acceptable level. And now to make it a little bit more difficult, there are three, at least three, components in election technology that I would say have to be included in the equation. One is enfranchisement, to allow people to vote. You said it perfectly. Election officials have it in their hearts. They want to get people that vote, and they want to get it back. There is this passion to allow people to vote. So simplicity, quickness, no big deal. American Idol is a key. That's one dimension. Second dimension, jingle, 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 the coins, finance, economics, cost. It doesn't necessarily come together with 
and enfranchising people. And then the third one is security. So, which one should we have? Well, of course, you'll say we should have all. We should allow people to vote in the broadest possible way. We should do it in a responsible financial manner. And at the same time, it should be totally secure. And I'm here to tell you, you can't have all three at the same time. And I'm being a little bit extreme. You can't have all three. You got to make trade-offs. So in which area do you make the trade-off? That's the question that we have to engage in. And unfortunately, we can't engage it just as computer scientists, just as election officials, just as social scientists. We have to kind of get together, which underlies the c spree methodology and philosophy that Lyons has created in this university of interdisciplinary attacks on cybersecurity problems. You have to do it. You can't do it any other way. <laughs> I'm going to uh, be very quick and try to conclude with some thoughts about, so how would I approach it? You know, in addition to things Lance said, I'm also, and I feel your pain, Rex, I'm also an election judge in the, county, in the state of Maryland. And this is my quick start toolkit on 200 pages. And every year it gets fatter. And I'm saying to myself, give me a break. And every time I show up in, a, in, an, in an actual uh, physical location as a chief judge, I look at my kind of employees for the day. And what do I see? I see very well-meaning citizens, but Maybe they're, they're not up to speed on their American Idol technologies. They're volunteers. They, they begin to look much more like me and on, on the elderly side of the spectrum. They're not necessarily too hot with technology. And as many election judges know in the state of Maryland, there's always the search for the phone line to plug the modem, which at 18.2 kilobytes a second will transmit securely the results back back to the county uh, and we're allowed to do it three times and then we can go home because usually it doesn't work. So you have to be realistic in terms of the election administration component. I'm very grateful to Matt because he really laid it out in terms of the positives as well as negatives. I also have another hat for the, those of you in Montgomery County residents. I cringe to admit that one. I'm an actual paid employee of Montgomery County, Maryland, part-time to advise the Montgomery County Council on all IT budgets. So we see at the Montgomery County Council level a variation year to year, anywhere between $10 million and $4 million, depending on how many elections are being held, of costs that you, the taxpayers of Maryland and everybody else indirectly, will have to dig into your pockets and make investments. And in the state of Maryland, of course, we even passed great laws and we can't implement the laws because we don't have any money which is a different way to approach economics. Don't, you know, think about creating solutions that are absolutely elegant, absolutely secure, absolutely open for everybody, but are expensive enough to make them unimplementable. So where would I go for a solution? Because I'm setting up kind of an impossibility. I would, I would look to my training as a systems scientist, and I would say, well, there are some generally general kind of guidelines. One of them is always early involvement of the end user. Whenever you do a complex system, you always, always, always find out from the end user. And here in elections, it's not clear who the end user is. Is it the election administrator? Is it the county official? Is it you and me, the voters? Is it the election commission at the federal level? Who is it? Who's the end user? Is it the poll workers? There are multiple end users. So we got to get really good at multiple inputs that have to be balanced. Second thing is, there's a, there's a natural sequence of events in engineering projects. No reason why we can't approach it like this. Design, development, pilot test, implement, evaluate, and zip back and go again. It's very hard to find these kinds of standard procedures in the world of election uh, of voting, maybe because of the multiple actors. The feedback is most important, and that's what we don't have enough of. We don't know how to take advantage of all the experience and the wealth of knowledge from the poll workers, from the election administrators, and develop either a statewide or a national map of how the users feel, how the systems are doing. I also think that we need to understand the role of profit 
because sometimes profit skews objectives and policies that we have. And of course, I'm talking about my friends, the industry. The, the truth is we can't run elections without some kind of machine that somebody manufactures. And where are they in the discussion? Sometimes we'd like to, to hack them into pieces. Sometimes we think they're doing terrible things. But they are a vital part of the puzzle. They ma make the machines that will work. Maybe we don't need an industry. And I'm very much intrigued with the notion of cut systems and maybe you know, kind of uh, um, uh, iPads and a, and a cloud computing solution that we don't need an actual specific industry with expensive costs. Uh, 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 to nurture uh, new solutions. But those things have to be kind of thought through. And then finally, the, 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 the real title of the talk was not only can, is America ready to vote on the internet, but it also talked about the security implications. And, you know, I think first of all, the, the, the first presentation we saw has us all thinking about, well, I guess nothing is, nothing is uh, 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 secure. Uh, because you can just go in and, and do things. There might be some, some reactions, like as an election judge, I know that I would hack off the hand of someone who tried to go to an actual election machine. But then, you know, you can, you can do it surreptitiously, you can be voting and at the same time stuffing the machine. There are all sorts of ways to, to game the system. That's, we're now back to risk management and how, how well do you want to do it. Um, Finally, the, the, the power of software is immense, and we saw the demonstrations of it. Lance, you were playing around with an Excel spreadsheet, and you found out that for some reason some function of Excel wasn't working, and the, the actual reason was Skype had done something to, to kind of uh, uh, run away with the functionality of the, of the what's it called? The, the, cut and paste. the cut and paste function. So the Excel spreadsheet wasn't working all of a sudden. And Excel is something that billions of people are using, maybe I'm overstating, hundreds of millions of people are using. <laughs> and all of a sudden we find out that some functionality of, of Excel was, was kind of robbed by another equally advantageous and good and, and verified thing called Skype that all of us perhaps uh, use. So it's not only the evil stuff, it's also the, the benign stuff that could really hurt someday. So my own uh, uh, admonition to, uh, in addition to the discussion is, is it possible to begin to establish platforms where these very, very different objectives, the, the enfranchisement of, of the voter, the cost of the system, and the security of the system can somehow be addressed as a risk management issue rather than an either or. We have to get to, the, to that point. And I think universities, uh, NGW, specifically, uh, should have a strong role to play. So thank you very much.